We do make a standing as we open with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, this is the day that you have made. On your calendar, for you are the eternal one, you have known that this man, Aaron Garcia, and this woman, Carol Acosta, will be here today in this area of Texas with all the families involved giving their lives to each other in the sacrament of holy matrimony. Psalms 139 declares, where can you go that I am not there already? So Lord, already you've been here from eternity past, hearing everything, seeing everyone in attendance, and seeing this young man propose that his heart now would belong to this young woman until only death do that part. So Father, we ask your blessing upon this matrimony, upon this ceremony, and the families that are becoming one in this day, according to your word and your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all may be seated. Aaron, if you and Carol can stand next to each other. And I'd like to begin by asking the, the question this, this afternoon, who is present this day that gives this woman's hand in holy matrimony. Thank you, sir. Y'all may be seated. Now, Aaron and Karen, this is a new beginning for both of you. You come out of your family, out of your parenting, and now you're starting your own journey. And as the word declares in the book of Genesis, when Adam awoke from the sleep that God had Place them into. Notice his words there. He said, as soon as he saw the woman, there was no definition from God. There was no words from heaven. As soon as he saw that woman, he said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. That was the oneness, the union, the relationship that Adam had with God. Not only did he see God, hear God, walk with God, he co-created with God. God said, man said. That was the union of man with his creator from the very beginning. But as soon as he saw the woman that came out from within him, because the Lord took that rib and out of that same substance, because it says that he created them, Man and woman, did he create the most? And without anyone saying, he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Then the Lord replied, for this reason, let a man leave father and mother, cleave unto his wife. It's okay, somebody bring me a chair. That's all right. In 40 years, I've seen you. That's all right. All right. Okay, so he said, therefore, let a man leave his father and mother, cleave unto his wife, and let the two become one flesh. Aaron and Karen, in all your years past, you've had friends, people very close to you, best friends, unions with different people. But I like to look at it as a a bridge of burning, where every bridge behind you is now being burned, doesn't exist anymore. Same with you, Eric. Every bridge of relationship, of union, now it ends. Though you have family, parents, siblings, it doesn't make any difference. There will never be anyone as close to your heart and soul like each other. Not only are you going to become husband and wife, but even best of friends, that any news, good or bad, each of you should be the first 
to be able to hear it and experience it. So today is a it's an awesome beginning. All set forth by God. It's God's will. But I want you to understand about marriage. Marriage is a sacrament. It's one of the closest things related to the Lord, the bridegroom, and the church, the bride. Aaron represents the bridegroom. You represent the bride, the church, in which the Lord built his kingdom. So together, both of you, I want you to understand something. One word that I want you to, to deposit in your spirit that never ever leaves you is the word sacrifice. Your marriage cannot fail if sacrifice is the first thing in your mind and in your heart. There'll still be desires in your heart there from this day forth. And also with you, Kara, there'll be desires in your heart, thoughts, imaginations, even dreams. But remember this, today you're sacrificing yourself one for the other. It's not, well, what about me? It's always you. No, it all ends. Because if you read in Scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, you will never ever hear, read, or see one word ever come out of the mouth of a sacrifice. Never. Because the sacrifice was completely overwhelmed for the person that it was standing for. So from this day forth, Aaron, let your life be one cry for the life of your wife. And Kara, let everything from this day forth be a cry of a sacrifice for Aaron. See, the Apostle Paul writes in Ephesus, and he says, Husbands, love your wives. And that's why you're here. But he takes it a step deeper. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ has loved the church and laid down his life for her. Today, Aaron, you're laying down your life. Couldn't do that for your parents or anyone else. You're laying down your life as a sacrifice to make sure that the one thing in your heart is to keep your wife totally satisfied. And today, Carol, what you're doing is in like fashion. Because the apostle goes on. He says, wives, submit yourself unto your husbands. He says, well, I'm willing to do that. But he takes it a step deeper. Even as unto the Lord. Now understand this. When someone creates something, invents something, there's always a purpose involved. Everything created, everything made has a purpose. And the purpose was in the mind, in the heart of the one who brought it forth. This is why when you purchase something, it comes with a manual. In the manual, you have every thought of what that person desired for that object to be. Well, the marriage has a manual. The manual is God's holy word. In it is every answer. And like I told you all when we met, why is it that over 50% of marriages end up in a divorce? And yet, there's never been a, a problem with marriage. There is none. Go to scripture. You will not find a problem in marriage. But when the couple tries to make marriage what it was never intended to be by the inventor, by the creator, that's where the problems begin. Now, there's people that are married for 40, 50, 60 years. But ask them if they're happy. Ask them, if they're, ask them if they're still in love. If they're still living sacrificially one for the other. Or if it's two people under one roof. See, today, the two 
shall become one. That's a huge difference. So as you walk out of this venue, as you walk out after, after everything is said and done, now you are portraying Christ and the bride. It's not just a husband and wife. Oh, you're married. Oh, this and that. No, you're bringing an introduction to the actual sacrament of Christ and the church and the church worldwide. So when you leave today, be that example. Be that visible, tangible, that can be seen by all, by your love, and by your submission. So it's, just, it's not just a, a wedding ceremony that people witness. Your witness is outside these walls that everybody can see. My wife and I are going on 47 years of marriage. I still open the door of the car. I still move the seat back for her to sit. We still hold hands while she's driving. Notice what I said, while she's driving. <laughs> but we still hold hands. And you know, today, sadly to say, if they see a man my age, they think, I wonder who that is. That's my bride. The woman that I have shared those almost 47 years with, that I still show others that the love that I had when I walked up to that altar is the same love that I have for her today. There's faith, there's hope, and there's love. And the greatest of those three is love, because love does not fail. At times, people get weak in their hope. Sometimes their faith leaves them, but love will always stand. That's why God is love. So Aaron, I ask you this day, do you take this woman to be your lawful wedded wife for the rest of your life? And Karen, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband for the rest of your life? Okay, may I have a token please? Each other. Understand. 
in God's eyes, you've always been together. Don't let it end. So Aaron, I want you to come close. I want you to take the ring. And as you place it upon her hand, I want you to look at her eye to eye, breast to breast, knee to knee, like no other man can from this day forth. So as you place this ring upon her hand, repeat the words that you've already rehearsed in your heart. With this ring here, I vow to you, my love, as found in Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And I bow my love to you now and forever. Now, Carol, as you place this ring upon his hand, repeat the words that you rehearsed in your heart. Aaron, I love you. I am glad that you brought joy to my life. Uh, thank you for loving me as I am with all your heart. I promise to walk by your side, to love you, to help you, and to encourage you in all that you do. Um, I will take the time to talk to you, to listen to you, and to take care of you. I will be there for you always in comfort, um, in sadness, and in company in joy. This is my promise to you, and I give you this ring where it goes well. Okay, now, Carol, I want you to understand. Not only are you exchanging your rings, as you've just done, but you walk out from here with a new name. Never will you be known by the name that everybody has known you as Carol Acosta. This is the, the weightiness, the beauty, the covenant, the sacrament of marriage. You're walking out with a new name. Even as a person comes to Christ, they're a new creation. They have a new name written down in heaven. That, that's the, the weightiness that God sees holy matrimony through his eyes and through his heart. So you're vowing today that whether he is present or absent, that you will bring honor unto your husband and unto your new name. So I want you to both understand the weightiness of the words that you have just shared. Now, let me have your hands with the rings on it. Father in heaven, as a minister of your word, I thank you for this day. For the witnesses, parents, families, friends that have all taken the time to be here on this special day of Aaron and Karen. Now they've witnessed the union of this, of this couple standing now as one. That is the oneness, the union, the relationship that you've allowed man and woman to enter into, into the, the, the matrimony that is holy in your eyes. I pray, Father, that they wear these bands of memory with health, with strength, and with their love only growing day by day for each other. So I bless this marriage in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, you may kiss your friends. As a minister of the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, I am both blessed and honored to be the first to publicly introduce unto you Mr. 
and Mrs. Aaron and Kara Garcia.